Ben is going to give us a mapping, DRAP mapping presentation. And uh, I'm sure everyone knows Ben uh, from the community. And uh, first time in live, I see your fantastic glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Ben asked, like, um, how to say hello in Norway. And I suggest you say, like, uh, hello, yeah, Ben, or yeah, are the utterly snill or cute. That's, uh, that means you're an incredible kind and a cool person. That's what I want to say. So that's Thank my introduction you. to Ben. Yeah. What's the last part? Sorry, what was the last part? The glasses? With big glasses. Yeah, with, with big glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've, th I've thrown this together. The, I've been talking about mapping and modeling um, with lots of different people, and I generally think people get it. And so we've been kind of prototyping and testing this stuff out because we want to kind of show people how it would work. So expect this to be janky and rough, but I'll, but I'll walk through. I think, first of all, the conversations I've heard is kind of talking about, in my mind at least, is a little bit like we're discussing, you know, how the car has to look, to use this analogy, the roads, what the rules of the road are going to be, like the engine. So an element of it is like, how are we going to drive it, right? How is the d going to drive once he's there? So all around us, everything is changing all of the time. Um, and in these ecosystems of like uh, exponential technology like Cardano, it's, it's even quicker. So I, the point I want to make there is that you're expecting things to change. And you, you have to have a model or a way of understanding the environment around you as it's changing. And if you're only relying on your own perspective on what you can see around you, it's incredibly limiting. And I think that um, it would be a superpower for us to kind of join people up in this idea of like a human sensory network. But sometimes people tell me I get a bit too abstract, so if I do, just and I'll try and bring it back to something uh, specific. Oh my god, chaos! This is what's happening when you become a team app, right? <laughs> you have a chaos, complexity, complication, and simple. So you're trying to go from an environment in which it's chaos, nothing is certain, no outcome is definite, you know, to complication where you're dealing with probabilities. You know, I have a theory, maybe if I do this, this might happen, you don't know for sure. Complication is where if you follow the instructions correctly, like with IKEA, you will end up with the correct outcome. And simple, this is where I like to be. Uh, it's predictable, it's a factory line, anyone can do it. So kind of we, to get uh, DRAPs who aren't technical, as you were saying earlier, you know, we need to get some of these things to become a lot easier to understand. So how do we make DRAPs lives simpler. Here's some notes I made this morning, which is why I was a bit late. Um, first of all, I think there's the voters. And if you're a DRAP, you obviously need to be listening and understanding as to what they want. You have to go out and explore and spend time with people. But you know, you're also going to have to explain stuff to them, whether it's synchronously or asynchronously. And these issues can be quite complex or take a lot of explanation. And there's some of the fine people in Kodano, some of these top devs, will get asked the same questions all the time. You know? And there's this kind of um, asymmetry in communities where there's the, the general population who are asking the same questions over and over. You know? And then there's people who have the experience, the most competence, the most knowledge, and their time and insights are very limited and precious. You've got to make the best use of them. So how can you scale sort of a limited resource like that? So I have some ideas. This is where I'm coming to. There's other DRAPs as well. So there's this individual perspective that I'm talking about, your own experience. This is true of me, but I don't know if it's true of everything around me, and how we can work together. Um, so it's seeing beyond our first uh, hand experience. Um, within this is also decision cycles. So um, our competitors, if you remember my first slide, is that these ecosystems are continually changing. And they're actually in competition. They have to collaborate with each other because they're in competition with other kind of ecosystems. So I'm talking about all DREPs as a whole have like a decision cycle of observation, orientation, decision, and action. And we have to operate in other people's decision cycles. This is maybe too abstract. I'm going to move on. Um, so another important thing you need to do is discovery. Like what's out there, for instance. We know on Twitter, that's, you know, a Corona ecosystem is not just Twitter. There's Discord, but there's geographical, what's happening on the ground. So there's a lot of discovery because I think, you know, people need to be seen, they need to be heard, and they need to be valued. And often a lot of us will jump into being heard. I will jump into being heard, you know, me, 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 because it's the simplest, most direct thing that you can do. 
But we really ought to invest on how can we make sure that we can see people first. Like, where are the votes, right? Like, where is the Kodana ecosystem in the community? How are we going to do this? We have to go out and explore and this kind of discovery where these voters are. Um, and then we need to bring it back to each other and share that knowledge and information, right? So that we can all see further. So there's some, uh, all, all the, <coughs> it's like an appreciating asset, right? It's where I'm coming with this. And then there's also onboarding. So shortening the time it takes people to get up to speed, like developers or people that are new to the ecosystem. These are problems that we have. Um, and there's a point I've made in here about like people have different learning preferences, like visual, auditory, kinesthetic learning styles. So kinesthetic is like the Rubik's Cube. You want to pick up and move it around and play with it, and you learn better like that. You know, like boys in physics, they want to have the atom model, right, to play with it to see what it's like, right? So all of these things are kind of things that I think that are important for DREPs and making their life easier. Like how can I help you get more of this or do it easier? Um, up at the top is a... I kind of see how there is a tragedy of the commons problem where there are lots of issues and gaps that we probably were all aware of them. Um, we all talk about them, but they're kind of non-owned. Right? No one specifically owns them. So I also think there's a way that DevOps can be able to drive awareness across the, the biggest entities, orchestrators, institutions, whatever we're calling them, uh, and basically give them this bucket list of these are the issues that we see you need to either find an owner for or, or advocate for. So, DVEPs in the middle, some of the things that I think would make their lives simpler. How am I doing for time? Was that too long? Uh, I'm not going to read you all this. You can have the slide. I just want to ask you something. Oh, first. sorry, no, go on. No, but, uh, I think you're fine on time. Uh, and if it's okay to you, uh, yeah. I'd like to have this discussion for you. Yeah, me. yeah. Uh, so to bring it down a bit, like, uh, could this be on, for example, GovTool, that you have like a history of voting and voting rationale, so you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time? Like, uh, you said voters, they need to, and these experts are giving the same answers time and time again. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, how do we create a decentralized platform that shows this, all of this information so we, so we don't have to do this every time? Like, uh, I, so I think it's like when I flew into uh, Oslo, um, it's perspective, right? I'm in the plane, I looked down as I was coming, I was like, wow, this is amazing, it's beautiful. And I was like, fascinated, I'm looking at like the past and the trees and you know, so, so it's perspective, like everybody's stuck in these text channels, I don't know about you guys, but in IOG, everyone's stuck on these hangouts, the calendar is packed, like, so there's an attention deficit, right? There's an attention deficit in, um, you know, where you're gonna put it. And so visual communication is really interesting. I think it's an entry point for people to help them visually explore what's around them. And so, and I'm saying like, it's not that you or I create this map. The map is in fact like the result of 80 different people having, you know, 300 conversations over like two weeks, whatever it is. And then you'd be able to plot and show how this is looking. So it's kind of, not like a Kodano improvement, but in the sense that Kodano improvement proposal is like a, a, a formal way of increasing the quality of the conversation and the discussion, I f kind of make the argument that I think together we can increase the, the quality and the value of exploring the ecosystem and understanding how it works. So like uh, you have a mapping of this expert group has expertise in this, and this community is active in discussion. On That's this. where we begin, yeah. yeah. So, so should hmm. Intersect also be on that list? You mentioned CF and Ergo. And yeah, we, we, when I show the map, so it, I've been calling them ecosystem engineers. This is like a beaver, right? A beaver has a significant ability to create, maintain, or damage the ecosystem it's in. So um, whether we call them institution or orchestrators or ecosystem engineers, in an ecosystem, there are entities that have a lot of influence, you know, and so that they, they can have a meaningful impact. So, yeah, um, it's included in the model. Yeah. Uh, you nailed it because, I mean, what we're really talking about is value chains. There's this role and he has needs and he's doing these activities. But if I turn the cog, if I give him more resources and I turn the cog, then down here we can see this and this and this move. So it's like a value chain and you can start exploring these things. And if I'm pitching something in Catalyst or I have an idea, maybe I should be able to show you where I think the value's going to end up and like, you know, and what's going to happen. So I'm going to pick up where you, your point there is correct, right, the, with the value chains. I won't read all of this, but the first point we started with was with Wardley mapping, which is value chains, basically. And that looks a little bit like this. So this isn't the model we're going to end up at, but this is like how we could go and have conversations with different constituents. So maybe I want to speak to devs because I'm a, a, a DVEP. 
and I want to speak to NFT people, whoever I think are the important personas or roles that I want to speak to, I'd have a box like this for each kind of core group I want to go and talk to. And when I'm speaking to them, I want to understand how they're seeing uh, the ecosystem or the land around them, the environment around them, um, from their point of view, right? Because environments shape values, right? This is a no, this is an obvious thing everyone understands. Environments shape values, uh, the whole thing like with mimetics. So you want to come out and understand how people, are, what people are seeing around them. So you go to the hobbits in the Shire, and you're gathering some objects. What are the roles, needs, activities, pain points that you are seeing with you in the Shire? Then I go to the elves in Rivendell and ask them the same question. <laughs> And then I go to the orcs, and then I come back and give Nick a big map that shows him like the commonalities, like what, what's generally being said. And this is more qualitative than it is quantitative. It's not just data. There is a little bit of the art is in the insights, you know, how, you, how you're going to gather it. So there are kind of six steps here. Can you zoom in a bit? Uh, this is low res, so I can zoom in, and it will be equally shit. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm happy to share the boards with you after. And these, these are screen grabs of a prototype that we've been doing within Etersect. We have an ecosystem um, uh, mapping group, and then I think there was a governance tools thing. So we were testing the Wardley maps uh, to begin with. And I think these things get developed iteratively. So the more that we will try it. Yeah, yeah uh, I, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's right. Yeah. The thing that I, I came to think about with this is w when you have a DREF, they might not be experts in how to engage um, service providers, for example. Because, okay, you go out into the ecosystem, you identify a pain point that everyone is experiencing. Maybe it's like, okay, we hate batchers. Let's see if we can figure this out. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you've identified the problem, which is what people are aware of. Now you need to figure out, okay, how can we actually solve it? Who do we deploy and how do we engage with them, right? Like, to use an analogy with a video game, you see the screen, you see this, you know, beautiful area that you're in and there's like a big red mm. ring that you need to go over to, what are your controls? How do you actually navigate from where we are now to get over there to you know, solve the objective, right? So for who, who are the players that can actually facilitate this? You know, you have M Labs and Vaccine mm. Labs and, you know, uh, Tweed and all of these, you know, IOG for that matter, mm. that, that can actually perform some of these tasks in terms of, you know, do the actual development research, all the stuff that needs to be done. You also need to present it in a way that they can actually handle it. Because it's like, okay, fix batchers. That, that's not mm. a, a problem statement that can be worked on. It needs to be translated into like an RFP or something like that that can actually be submitted. You know, the proposals can come in from these institutions on how to solve it. And then you, you can sort of select the, the cheapest one, for example, or the best one. It's, it's a really good point. Because if you imagine we had, I don't know, 100 D reps, right? And they're all going out wanting to think about what are the issues, who are the people that are going to vote for me, there would be a bit like a, like, you know, like a survey fatigue if you had too many surveys. Like if, if Emergo gets 100 DREPs that all want to have um, that time to go through it. So there needs to be a shared language or a shared way that we're going to understand things like roles, needs, activities, and pain points. And with these big organizations, I think that you could run a group once with them every X amount of time and bring it in. And I think, um, and I don't know all parts of the ecosystem either. So I'm sort of, in my mind, the DevOps are coming out and they're canvassing areas around the ecosystem. And then it's like, how can we take those 100 DevOps and then capture what they've learned and bring it all together so we can explore each other's experiences beyond that, if that makes sense. Um, the main point of this slide I hope to convey is that we've got a methodology or we've got a way that you don't have to follow it step, uh, you don't have to do it our way. But there's a way you can go through um, having these conversations with people so you're aiming for it to be a bit more productive and have lasting value beyond just talking to them, you know? And a way that they can um, uh, engage with you and explore with you, and I think it's really interesting. Um, so these are the... This yeah, in the ecos We've done an ecosystem uh, mapping work group. Uh, I've got uh, Rupert in there, who's the DevRel lead for, on my team. So he, that's an intersect. And then we've also had it in the governance tooling um, working group with the Wardley maps. And the other thing I should mention around this is um, I started with the Wardley maps because it's simpler. It's simpler to say, hey, we're going to go, who do you think we need to talk to? Developers? OK, let's get a group of developers in. And we'll go through some Wardley mapping. So it's simple. It keeps the focus narrow for the person you're talking to. So if you're the developer, 
I can go through this box of six steps and talk to you. It's a conversation tool. It's a discussion tool. You know, so what, what is the purpose, this kind of thing? The purpose is very important. You've got to be really clear. One thing I found quickly was um, when we first did it, my team started mapping the whole of Kodane. And then like, when I started picking up some of the work, I got a bit lost because I was like, oh, wow, it's like, this is a lot. And then I thought, no, but what's the North Star? What's the purpose here? It's like Voltaire to increase participation in the governance. Then it was really, once I had a really clear idea of what the purpose was, very easy to say, well, this is relevant, it's not relevant, and you could sort it. So um, and with, I was, we can go back on any of this, but I want to make sure I don't run out of time. So then this is like, you come out and have, uh, a lot of these Wardley mapping uh, sessions, and there's many, many boxes in our Miro. And back in the back cave, what you're looking to do is create this model, right? So there's two pieces of language I'm using. I'm saying model, and I'm saying map. So models are what we would all be creating as DREPs, mapping out, um, sorry, exploring the ecosystem and coming back and building this model out. And then from that, you can create maps. And the maps are what you would have a big, you are here. If I want to speak to, uh, someone who's voting, I could explain a complicated issue in the value chain by plotting it on a map. Or well, to put that a different way, we go out and gather the needs, roles, uh, activities, these kinds of things. But when you go and speak to one of your voters, what you put on the map is, uh, what you leave off the map is more important than what you put on it, right? What you give your health minister is different to what you would be showing your army general, is different to what you show your education minister. I'll quickly explain this model if it doesn't make any sense, which it might not. But this is the ecosystem. You break it out into a material layer. So this is like what's being built. This is an information layer, so knowledge and experience. The ecosystem engineers or orchestrators or whatever terminology we use, these are the, these are the big entities that have the most uh, influence. An ecosystem engineer in the information layer would be like Charles Hoskinson because he could materially... Uh, um, create, maintain, or damage an ecosystem, but not if it's building, because it's IOG or different teams that are actually in the material layer, right? Around the edges, you have constraints and expansions, and we can go further into that, but you're showing people, in terms of cultural developments, what's helping the ecosystem grow, what's holding it back, so we can come out here. Information exchange markets can be light or dark, that's where someone's expe expecting to get some sort of a resource or reward. Um, I think, like, uh, Catalyst is probably a good example of an information exchange market. Then we have like distribution channels, like airdrops, this kind of stuff. Um, and then this is janky and prototyped, but we started planning this out. And red are the roles, yellow is the activities, blue are needs. And so the idea is you would start as this, it's like a low res picture. Every iteration, we're trying to sharpen it up. So once we've been running it for a while, you start to have a familiar template and you can add to it, you know? And then so the idea is this being the model, if we imagine lots more work was put into it, um, you could then build your maps out. So it's, it's, it's the sandbox or the drawing board that you've all come together. I've been out, I've got these insights. Let's get them on the table. Like, let's start chopping them up. And then when you want to run your campaign, well, that's different. Then you're going to create a map, and you're only going to plot what's important. So when you're speaking to your voters, I'm voting on this issue because I can see that these needs and activities exist. And if we solve this problem, then downstream it's going to have these impacts. You see what I mean? So this is kind of like the idea. It's not as developed as we need it to be. Um, but if I got that through in 15 minutes, then we can spend the rest of the time answering questions. <laughs> Does it make sense, or is it completely... It's, it's hit or miss. Like I try and explain these things. It makes sense in my head, which is the, yeah. Oh, what's, have, what have I got after this? Have we got anything else after this? Um, yeah, so tragedy of the commons. Uh, so the idea, how do I go back one? So the tragedy of the commons, sorry. So my idea was, the idea is, after like a cycle of this, this is secular. It's not you do it once. It's, it's repeatedly, so it's a virtual circle. At the end of each cycle, the tragedy of the commons is lots of our issues, gaps, problems are going to get identified. And it's like a non-owner. It's like a non-owner, right? Nobody actually owns these things specifically. And so this, you can have this issue where it's not behaving optimally or the ecosystem suffering even if some people are, are benefiting, right? Um, and it, this is about driving awareness because then DRIPs can come back in and be like, these, you are best placed whoever is in these ecosystem engineers, to find us owners for these problems, you know? 
Um, so what you've gone out is you've got a kind of a consensus among the DUVEPs of an actions item, things that have to be looked at. Now, I know those things won't get action straight away. Anybody that's been monitoring K-parameter will probably <laughs> will say that. But what we have is a, a spotlight. So like when I've worked with teams, especially when it's senior people, you can't come in and uh, tell someone they must do something or it, there's a problem. Instead, you want to spotlight it, you know, and put it front and center repeatedly because repetition is persuasion. So you spot it. And, and these are the visual maps that I think other people could understand. So I think people that are non-technical, you'd be able to simplify some of these issues down. So, you know, like in Catalyst, I think it was said that sometimes, you know, what was getting voted on might be like what was popular, not necessarily what was needed on some sort of like a technical level. And we need some visual way to represent that. So I think... Um, yeah, I mean, if Douglas Turbo was shown with a map of what's available and what technology was coming, I'm not sure it would have been voted through. So, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And then, depending on how much time we've got, there are examples that we can explore. So these are on Miro. I can share the links to you guys. Um, so this is an example. Who's this? Uh, so this would be like Ben and Fired that we're mapping Voltaire. These are all the different um, boxes that they've been running it through. And then we've been playing around with the models down here. So I need we have, training to do this. <laughs> we have some disagreements on like how it should be done. So at the moment, I just haven't had time. But we're trying to put in, we're trying to plot it how I want it. This is interesting to me because I'll share one thing with you. I, we, we had hundreds of conversations and it was around Voltaire and voting. And then when I got into the model, I was like, well, where's digital identity? And it wasn't there. And it's just such a great example. If you can have somebody can be in an ecosystem, or airdrops is a, di a distribution channel. Like, nobody thought of it, even though everybody's in the environment all of the time. And if I say airdrops are a distribution channel, you'll be like, yeah, of course. Or digital identity is important to voting. Yeah, of course. But it's easy to miss things sometimes, you know? So that's another, uh, myself, I found that really interesting. So um, this is where we're at, which is um, very early stages. Um, but I think it could potentially be the right time for DOPs to think about something like this, because getting it in now at the beginning and saying this is how we're going to, whether it's this exact thing or whatever, this is how we're going to help other people explore what's around us. This is how we're going to make sure that we're not just in an echo chamber by ourselves, and this is how we can increase transparency and visibility. And then there were some obvious big wins because the, when you start thinking about the maps, not the models, but the maps, every Web3 ecosystem is just a bunch of tables with logos in it. It's like really unimaginative, the same thing all of the time. And it's interesting about value chains is it shows like a flow of where the value and the energy is. It can show where people can get involved in. And I think it's a way that we could, uh, through publishing and Intersect and with the DevOps, really stand out, show something that was uh, different and sort of human first, people first orientated, you know? Um, so that's kind of my my 15 minute ramble. Thank you for letting me have it. Should we, Questions? Uh, have us a question around first? Yeah. I think we have time, right, Thomas? Uh, not really. Not really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did I go too fast? I went fast because it was 15. We have time for a couple of questions. Uh -huh. Uh, my main question is like, uh, how, how do we get started? This do we have some training on this? Like, it seems large task, and I just see all of this. Like, uh, I don't know that model. Yeah. Uh, uh, how do I get involved with that? I think we just need to have a work group of DevOps, and we need to document the uh, the process, the methodology. This is just a starting point, right? It's not like I figured the whole thing out. All I'm showing you is a bit of a, a pencil on the back of a a pencil drawn diagram on the back of a cigarette packet, right? What we'd have to do is have a little working group, get together, write down like this methodology step by step. Here's the cycle, here's how we're doing it. Then we build out the, uh, the model and it gets better and better over time. And then we plug in people like marketing people who can create beautiful maps and imagery out of it. So I have like, I have got buy-in from different people like Sabina in IG's creative director. She's really interested in mapping, it's really interesting. Uh, so far, I spoke to Brian Intersect. What's his, um, Brian? Um, Williams. I don't know, but he is, uh, he's putting a lot, he was, yeah, you, you must know. Uh, because he doesn't begin with M, Brian Meyer or something? I get Ryan, my... I'm Ryan, I'm Ryan Williams. Yeah. Okay, there's somebody I spoke to, I'm not sure who it is, but whoever they are. 
Um, so, so yeah, I think like you know, there's an expression of interest, but what I uh, what is needed is a, an example of success and an actual model that people can pick up. You know, so I think uh, my call to action would be if there was anyone interested in forming that initial working group and then just running through it, and what we would want to end up with is a DREP kind of model of Voltaire that any other new DREPs could come in and go. So just talk me through how how does it work? You know. People talked about like JSON, you can make a dynamic map out of this, you could have wikis attached to it. Because it's a visual layer that you're coming in on, other stuff can be linked underneath. So, you know, um, DREP documentation and things could be, yeah, it's just a way to explore. So, <coughs> question. So, a DREP or all those DREPs would go through, you know, looking at this, working on this, iterating, you know, improving it, and then when it comes time to vote for stuff and propose, you know, governance exactly, actions yeah. and everything. You extract this map, which is sort of subset of this thing that you're making that is relevant to the thing you're worried about, and you're presenting that, trying to attract voters and, and you know get your proposal through. Then what? Right. Um, well, so firstly, I think there's many things you can do with it. I think that maps that help understand uh, well, maps themselves. You can do lots of different things with maps, right? But maps can help people understand what's going on around Cardano and Voltaire right now, today, the latest. So these things could be published on Intersect's website, <coughs> and people would want to come and, and, and see what was going on. I think you could have them as templates. They could be open source. So it could be a methodology that we publish. And it says, this is how you can go out and talk to people and come back in and build out a model. That might be really relevant if you're a DAP or you're a project that's building in Cardano. Because you might have community managers who are like the cheapest resource, like non-technical. You don't know what you want to do with them. Well, get some of your volunteers to go out and do some mapping for your business. And you can spot out opportunities, threats, this kind of stuff. I think this kind of thing can be done for competitor research. So, you know, if we have a look at other ecosystems, I think like the value is there now and lots of it, where there's other funding that's been available, people have been building stuff. So these maps help you. The best way to explain it, I think, is that these ecosystems change very fast. So sometimes the um, opportunities and threats are kind of emergent. They're kind of at the edges. So how are you going to spot them quickly and early? You know, and I think through something like this, with lots of people going out, they're having the conversations, they're doing it anyway. DREPs are canvassing anyway. But coming back and bringing what they've found out latest over the past couple of weeks, whatever the cadence is, and plotting it out on a model of a map is a... Uh, is, is hugely valuable because you can then come in and, and talk to people and, and discuss it. <coughs> one of my concerns is uh, the sexy problems. You know, mm. It's never going to be a problem to, to identify and address. Right? Yeah. But the day-to-day -day operations, right, with Voltaire and Intersect sort of taking over mm. uh, I/O infrastructure, you know, the uh, development and maintenance mm. of Cardano Core, of Hydra, of you know these these other sort of fundamental building blocks that you know Hydra has a roadmap and can prioritize different things but they have to apply for you know they have to get mm -hmm. funding for their initiatives maybe they want to do you know go and, and advertise some stuff like all of these things probably have to be you know rectified in, in some in some way right they have to be the D refs are going to be presumably uh, okaying or denying requests for funding for different initiatives by all of these unsexy things, right? So it's mm. a kind of day-to-day -day operation. Um, that's, that's a great, well, that's a great point, because I don't know if this is what you're saying. Maybe it was. You know, DREPs are going to have a lot of different decisions to make, and that itself is fatigue. It's, it's sort of um, how many decisions can I make and which ones are the most important ones. It's almost an overloading thing. And if there was a preliminary work where someone was mapping out exactly, I sit down with you, you know, work out this thing with Hydra with me, uh, and like uh, over half of people in IG have been less than two years. You know, one of the issues within the organization is helping people get up to speed mm -hmm. because, you know, everyone's trying to get to base camp. No one's getting to summit. And the problem with that is they're all not in IG anymore. I'm not talking about IG anymore. <laughs> but people can be looking like working on B plus problems because they're what is familiar to them. Mm -hmm. Or when you saw recently, um, um, the reason I spun up that ECS mapping group originally was because um, there was the community frustrated about like the voting and the ballot and like there were some people saying well these tools have already been built why aren't you using these tools is that you don't trust us whereas you know not saying CFYG but people in these organizations are working hard doing what they can do 
it doesn't mean they can necessarily see as far as what's around them. Even whatever your opinion is about whether they should or shouldn't, you know. So my issue there was the real issue is that it's hard for people to have that breadth of perspective, especially if they've been in an ecosystem of two years. And if we're going to scale and get adoption, most people will have been here less than two years. So you know, two years is arbitrary. I'm just people are always trying to find out what's going on around. They don't know where the value and the opportunity is. And uh, so to say your point, I think they, it's just a tool. So I'm not saying it's a tool that fixes everything. Of course not, you know. But in that instance, I do think a few DVEPs may go and explore an issue in depth and then be able to try and explain those issues with an extra level of simplicity. Otherwise, you've got this burden of having to, like, read, you know, I had it, there was a slide I deleted, but the DYOR problem, do your own research, and this, the, the barrier is so high, I've got to go and read the white paper, I've got to go and do this, I've got to go and work out the technical explanations, and just make it simple, right? And This will support the general theory, like uh, yeah. the one that's not a domain expert on all of these topics. Yeah, yeah. exactly, because yeah. If, if, if you vote yes on everything, that's mm. horrible. Mm. If you vote no on everything, that's horrible. Yeah. So, you know, the DVA, they have to, in, in the case of uh, requesting funding, right, from Treasury or from, from Intersector, mm -hmm. sort of whatever the, the, the actual uh, mechanism there will be, you know, they have to actually weigh in on this a little bit and, you know, take, take a stance. Like, okay, you know, this is a problem that we need to address, but maybe you guys aren't the people to, ad to address yeah. it. Maybe we uh, publicize a, a, an RFP. Maybe we have, you know, like, okay, everyone's competing on equal footing, right? Yeah. We just need to fix this problem. You know, maybe for all we know, horrible example, in probably, but you know, let's say that M Labs mm. had a much better way to solve a specific problem for Hydra than you know the Hydra team mm. and their proposal, and you know, okay, maybe they come in and, and fix this, and they get the actual funding to do that. Mm. Right? So these are sort of the, the day to day operational things when, when it comes to funding initiatives, choosing who to do the actual work, how do we solve the problems and everything. So I, I think sort of. One, one other thing is it, it's not just Cardano or Voltaire. You can apply this for anything. So if we were in M Labs, yeah. we might do our own version of that. You could have an internal. So these this methodology, these kind of tools, I think, can be applied over and over at different levels, or you know. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just thinking. You know, having the the super high uh, high sort of level view and categorizing everything, and then. Drawing this back into the mm. maps is, is very useful, but it, it also the sort of action level that yeah. comes after that yeah. is also a, a very very important part because that's you know how you actually execute things. I, I agree with that, and in addition, in what you may be think of as the curse of knowledge, where like we all forget uh, what it's like to not know about Cardano and have spent time in this space and. I was at a wedding at a bar and I was explaining, like, I don't know, my wife's cousin or whoever he was about Kurt. And, like, his whole face was just, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, just, the, I couldn't find any common ground. I was, but it's a bit like this. So it's a bit like, and they're just, yeah, just totally, you're speaking a different language, you that's know. A, that's a perfect segue, because uh, that's what I started this uh, workshop with, like, this introduction. Like, how can you. Uh, uh, talk about the delegate representative to someone who's known about Cardano since yesterday, mm -hmm. right? And you need these type of tools to do this. So uh, I, I think this is an important topic and thank you so much for presenting it. This looks like something like we can talk to you and engage and yeah. maybe get into a work group. I'd actually, one last point. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see, to say, uh, when I think about the Constitution, I had thought about getting DRAPs to go and do this kind of geographically in their location. So Let's say South America, like LATAM, DREPs should be able to, we could work the LATAM guys, they're really interested in it, and then create a model for a geographical ecosystem, right? Um, there's something really interesting here where most people are just working with online data or analytics and they see this top level, and this human sensory network becomes something that is our advantage because other people aren't doing it like this. So I don't know if that was. Maybe we should have a Nordic uh, mapping of. Uh, should you? I, yeah. Bro, I would just do it. I, I, I you don't have to know why me. that came up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, so everyone, thank you so yeah. much to uh, Ben for having